Because I'm now joined by Rendsburg Shepherd's bond strategist Darren Rain. Thanks so much for coming in, Darren. So what are we talking? 5.9% yield for six-month bills. This, this just isn't sustainable, is it? No, those sorts of yields are definitely not sustainable. Uh, governments cannot borrow those, those sorts of rates when, when the economies are grown at, at, at 1% or, in Portugal's case, at, at, negative, at a negative level. Just to put this into perspective, the yields have now soared to double-digit figures on, on five-year debt, let alone the, the, the six-month debt. So this is actually higher than Irish yields were when Dublin sort of bail out, what, last November? Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, we, everyone in the market is saying that um, Portugal needs to go for, for, ha, needs to have a bailout. Mm. It's just a matter of time. We know that there, there's a political infighting. We know that the, the election won't happen to the 5th of June. And so it's a wait and see. But there are concerns in the market about Portugal's solvency and its ability to meet bond redemptions both this month and also in June. I mean, it, it seems to be, you say this is what the market is expecting. They're expecting a bailout. Is it then becoming increasingly risky for them not to seek a bailout when we're talking about borrowing costs at this level? That is true, because you might argue, what, why, why would you borrow one-year money when it's, it might be cheaper to borrow under the rescue plan for seven and a half years than it is to borrow for one year? So that's true. But the problem in Portugal is, is, is that the current government feels it doesn't have a mandate and the opposition doesn't want to get involved because it wants to blame the current government for taking the, the bailout money. Yeah, so the politics is a big obstacle right now. but Correct. is economically, financially, is postponing a bailout bad for Portugal? It, it is bad because it's having to borrow at these, at these higher rates. And, and as you say, certainly for the five-year period, I, I, I don't think Portugal could, could borrow for five years. At the moment, it can borrow for one year. But, but it, yeah, it, it's certainly not good. So it makes sense to tackle this sooner rather than later? Oh, absolutely. And in actual, in actual fact, one of the things the Portuguese bank uh, chief execs have, have been suggesting is that, um, that maybe some sort of bridging loan should be provided by the European authorities. And I think that sounds like a good idea just to get us through the next few months. I mean, you must be paying very close attention to the economic numbers that we're getting right now. Government mm -hmm. revised up its deficit, so it's not meeting its target there. Public debt to GDP ratio expected to rise to, what, above 100 percent in the next few years if yields stay at this level, if they don't fall back. Does this mean debt restructuring? At some point, yes. I, I fear for, both, for Greece, for Ireland and, and for Portugal, there will have to be some sort of debt restructuring over the next few years. But the important point is that markets cannot withstand that right now. Markets are too fragile, particularly we're still worried about the banks. And so I think um, the ECM, the new mechanism, is pushing it beyond 2013, which is the right thing to do. Can they withstand an interest rate hike? They can withstand an interest rate hike, but clearly it's not helpful for the Portuguese, again, for the Greeks, for the, for, for the Irish. I mean, the, the, the interest rate rise is all about Germany. Okay, good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Dan Rain, Rendsburg Shepherds.